Clarissa Burt is an actress, television personality and former model, best known for starring as Zaidi in the 1990 film The Never Ending Story 2, The Next Chapter. Her international best-selling book, The Self-Esteem Regime, published in 2021, showcases her expertise in empowering self-esteem. And Clarissa is here with us. How are you today? Oh my gosh, I'm so darn good. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm excellent, thank you. <laughs> So um, this book, The Self-Esteem Regime, the title of it almost sounds like a strict fitness routine. Are we expected to do push-ups for self-esteem? Because Well, no, I mean, taking care of yourself, you know, your body is a part of it. But regime is really an organized way of doing things. And so why I called it that is because I, it's not a read. You're not going to read about self-esteem. You're going to put your hands dirty. You're going to, you know, you're going to, you know, put your big boy britches on. I guess we could say, <laughs> and get to work. I mean, it's it is called you know an action plan for becoming the competent person you were meant to be, um, and that's exactly what we do. We, it's twelve chapters. Each chapter starts with a reword. We start with release, and then we move on to rebuild, and then we move on to responsibility and reinvent, and all the different things that I think are really important yeah. for living in happy, healthy self esteem. And why did you want to implement it as a regime and not just? reading about self-esteem because i want people to do something about it i want people to have an act plan i want them to have the blueprint i want them to do the work some people say oh work okay put in the effort uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know put in the effort then uh, but you know uh, to be able to start straight out straight up you know you're going to be able to have case studies you're going to have affirmations you're going to have clarissa's corner you've got the uh, clarion call you've got a, a homework review you've got all kinds of different things going on that will help you know guide you through what is it you need to know here that we got a journal about this. Hey, here's where we got to start working with some mirror therapy. When you actually start, you know, the exercise in the book that I think is the most impactful really is mirror therapy. And it looks weird. And it feels weird. And it sounds weird. And you're probably going to want to do this when nobody's home, uh, yeah. except you, you know, you just look into the mirror and, you know, there are two different things that you can do in the mirror. And that is you can look at the mirror or you can look into the mirror. And that's to me is two different things. You look at the mirror when you're brushing your hair and then you look into the mirror when you're actually looking into your eyes, which, ha you know, you start to like look into your own soul and speak to yourself and you speak, you say the things to yourself that you really need to hear. I love you. I like you. I need, you know, I need you to be, you know, stronger. I I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm so proud of you. Like whatever it is that you really want to, uh, to say to yourself. And once you continue along that path, like I said, it's weird and it feels really weird, but Louise Hay got it in her book, uh, and in her works. And then Jack Canfield, who's the co-writer of chicken soup for the soul had it in his works as well yeah. so it's been around for a while and it is truly truly impactful yeah you've got to double check that there's nobody else in the house because it will be quite embarrassing if you're caught doing that but if you are caught doing that could you maybe just explain it and say this is what i'm doing i'm not completely deranged yeah i'm not completely deranged i'm halfway deranged but i'm not completely <laughs> and uh no i mean i really uh you know self-esteem is something that we really have to be mindful of these days and that is <laughs> if you are not your feet aren't you know if your self-esteem is intact by the time your feet hit the ground in the morning you can have some issues either with yourself or with others and the other yeah. thing you know after the three years now these past three years for us i mean we've really been beaten up and kicked to the curb as far as psychologically how we are acting how we're reacting and it's on a global scale we see it all you have to do is you know jump on tiktok or watch the news to see that you know it's kind of everybody's becoming unravel everybody many people are becoming unraveled i yeah. do care i generalize and 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 there's this sense of loss the loss of family, friends, jobs, money, uh, loss of hope, loss of individuality. You know, it's kind of like on the other side of COVID, who am I now? You know, there was, there was the great resignation. So a lot of people went down that path and they kind of went, oh, well, if I don't want to work a nine to five, I have to be prepared to work 24 seven. Well, nobody told me that because nobody, <laughs> you know, entrepreneurship is a whole different thing. So lots up in the air, lots going on and what I'm doing and all self-help work does and, and all personal development work, uh, work does is just continue to give you hope. It gives you hope. It gives you clarity. It gives you uh, a blueprint. You know, it gives you assistance. It gives you guidance. It gives you support. And that is what we are really in need of. I feel we've always been in need of these things, but maybe just a little bit more 
now. So why is self-esteem so important? Well, it's our perception of self. So it's everything we bring to the table. You know, it's who am I when I show up in front of you? Am I am I in am I empowered or am I empowered? <laughs> like am I am I you know am I strong, big bold and bright? You know, or am I really just kind of you know fearful of pretty much everything? You know, and so self-esteem is one of those kind of these self-confidence, it's self-awareness, it's self-improvement. I want to be a better person tomorrow than I am today, for example. That's one of the things that I, I really am mindful about. And it's and again, it's it's self-awareness. You know, who am I? What triggers me? And how do I deal with my triggers? Right. So self-esteem is pretty much everything we are. It's yeah. everything. It's it, it it's a direct reflection. It's our perception of self. It's our direct reflection of you know of what we're bringing into the world uh whether it be you know love relationships relationships with family you know work it's, it's pretty much everything um and um and i and i can't i cannot stress enough how important it is and when i first got this book back it's a new york city publisher when i first got the book back uh toby it was it was you'll see it's three iterations of blue so it was pink yeah. yellow and orange right it was three really feminine colors and i asked and you never do this this is like so i asked the, the publisher i i wrote back and i said can i ask one only one thing can you change the colors three colors and make them three iterations of blue yes it's a more soothing color, but I want men to pick this book up. I want you know to understand that self-esteem doesn't discriminate and that men uh, are in just as much need as women are, you know, girls and boys. We all, uh, it, you know, as I said, it doesn't scri- uh, discriminate. I can speak to a 12-year-old girl about self-esteem as well as I can an 82-year-old male. And, and 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 everybody goes through their things, and you know, uh, divorced people, separated people, uh, people that have just been told that they're ill. Can you imagine? You know, when you when when if I were to bring up the case scenario of a woman in breast cancer, you know, and um, you know, has got to basically maybe shave her head, or you know, she's got to you know remove her breasts. I mean, there are all kinds of case scenarios whereby self esteem is is not just one of those poo poo uh, you know catchphrases anymore. It's not one of those. Uh, it's not an act, whatever. It's everything. It's everything we are. It's exactly what we bring to the table and how we want to perceive, be perceived, and 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 the mark we're making in the world. So yeah, it's pretty damned important. Would you say the book is for everyone, really, both men and women, despite the fact that the cover is a blue, which Absolutely. is typically a male color? Yeah. When we when we when we first came, you know when the first book first came out, it really was more you know female centric, if you will. But I kind of like halfway through, I went, but wait a minute. No, you know, let's, so I asked to change the cover and men will definitely get as, as much, if not more. I mean, we start out with release and that's releasing everything that you've learned from the familial tribe, from friends and family, the things you've learned from your educative uh, institutions, the things you might have learned from your faith, even, I don't know, Hmm. but the things that you know today that are not serving you anymore, doesn't mean you won't be home for Christmas dinner. I still love you, mom and dad, (laughs) but there are certain things. Things that I might have been taught or that I need to let go of or that I need to release because they're not serving my greater good right now. I, I was saying before in another podcast, I learned that yelling and screaming at home, oh man, that was a way to get heard. And it was a, just a way of life. Yeah. Just the way it was. Well, I got out into the world and yelling and screaming. I found out real fast, just wasn't going to cut it. I had to release that way of thinking pretty early on. I mean, at home, it seemed like the most normal thing on the planet. (laughs) And so I started trying it on others. And then it was like, yeah, no, that's not going to work. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's... a lot of this are the things that, again, as I've said, we've got to release a lot of things. And then chapter set two is rebuild. I mean, we get right into ground zero. Let's get rid of what's not, what's not, so what's not working? What isn't serving you? Where do you want to be? Here's a blueprint. Where do you want to go? Let's work on that and make sure that you're doing the, I say the work. Some people say, oh God, not work. Let's call it effort. All right. Call it effort. I don't care what you want to call it. <laughs> Call it play. I don't care, but just do the work or do the play. You know, yes. just do the book. Um, and um, and I have to say that uh, I'm getting some really great feedback of people that are implementing uh, everything that is you know outlined in the book. And 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 again, you know, when I was a kid, there was no internet and computers. We didn't have any of that. But I would go into the bookstores, and here in the states, we had Walden Books, Border Books, and and Barnes and Noble. And I, and there was this little teeny section. I'm sorry for the. It was a little a teeny <laughs> section called. It's a, it's my email coming in. It's a little 
be called self-help. Well, first of all, I want to remind you that it's called self-help and it's not shelf help. So if you buy the book, do the damn work. And then, um, and then, <laughs> and then, you know, now there, there are no more, there's only Barnes and Noble remaining. I'm happy to say my book is in there. It's uh-huh. right there. I was in Barnes and Noble, but you know, it's rows upon rows of what is now called personal development. And uh, oh, I don't have any time for that. I have no time. Well, you better make time because I'm telling you, there's, you know, there's a reason you've come across this message. There's a reason you're hearing this message. Go you know, do the work. Um, and know that, you know, personal development now is a billion dollar industry. And why is that, Toby? Because we're all still looking for answers. Yes. We're, all, we're all hurting. We all need the support. We all need the guidance. We need, again, the blueprint. We need to get out of the pain. We, this, you know, and, and that is it. Therein lies the conundrum. When you're in pain, some people go, that's ah, just the way it is. Yeah. I'm just going to live there. And you don't have to live there anymore. That's, that's, that's what personal development's all about. Now, because it's such a big industry now, what do you think sets your book apart from all the others out there well you're not gonna as i said you're not gonna read about it you're gonna actually you know, do it you're gonna implement the stra- there's a st- whole strategy here so it's like you know what why would i want to read about it when i can actually like roll up my sleeves put on my big boy britches pull out a journal start <laughs> writing start reading start you know like writing like what's not working what are the pain points in my life what is it that i'm still where am i stuck where what where what, like where are my fear points like what's tr- where my trigger points what are they and how do i get past them you know we talk about triggering a lot now and that is you know you've got to be able through personal development you you start to acquire the tools that you put in the shed for any given moment in life because life's a lovely place to be too but we all love being here but we also know that life life triggers you and it's going to come through and it's good something's going to knock you straight on your butt and it's going to hurt and the more tools you have in that shed that you can pull out when that storm comes through when here comes that tornado you know, here comes the typhoon or whatever it is, batting down the hatches, everybody in the basement. Great. But when you come out of the basement, you know, I, t- I talk about standing strong in your stead. Let's use the tree analogy, right? Yeah. Well, did you lose a leaf or two in the storm? Maybe you lost a branch, but you weren't uprooted in the storm and transported away, right? Because you had those tools that, you know, once the triggering happened, you were able to fall back on and say, hold on. On, hold up. You know, let's give this a go, as you might say over there. Let's yeah. give this a <laughs> this ago and you know that you know there's so much more out there that's available to you uh in the way of these you know tools that i'm talking about that you really should be stacking up in your shed and is anybody ever able to perfect self-esteem so people say oh can i take a self-esteem you never take a self-esteem test and get a hundred doesn't work that way (laughs) and again what i've just illustrated to you is i'm fine today i am peachy i'm having a (laughs) great day right now but yeah. ask me how 2022 went. Well, 2022, I was to the hospital twice, three weeks worth of COVID, high fever, through to the hospital twice, lost my entire Google Drive, my entire Google Drive. I lost everything I knew. gone, gone, not Google's fault, long story, but I won't, I won't uh, bore you with it. Lost my entire Google Drive, had to break up a relationship with someone I was madly in love with because I wasn't feeling very esteemed. So I couldn't be teaching and preaching about that that kept me in you know in a difficult place for quite some time and then i had in july i had food poisoning and in august my mother was in a near fatal car accident that led me to be taking care of her day and night for six months so 2022 was one of the worst years of my life but one of the best things was the book because I did over 200 podcasts that kept me getting up, getting my hair done, getting my you know makeup on, putting on a, you know some clothes, and bringing my message to those that may have been in need. That not knowing for a moment that, that I was really teaching what I needed to learn. So my book, my own book, was kind of my saving grace for the all, the entirety of 2022, almost the entirety of 2022. <laughs> wow. So, yeah. Just to give you an idea of, well, I'm damn glad I had the tools in the shed at the time when, you know, the storm was coming through. Yes. That's what that's what I'm here to say. You know, yes, no, you get 100% on that self-esteem test because 
life is life. And as yeah. beautiful as it is, it will be difficult at times. And, and those triggers are going to, they're always going to be there. Now, 2022 also, you were knighted by the Royal Order of Constantine the Great and yes. St. Helena and became a dame. Did that help with your self-esteem a bit? Because having a title, does it make you feel important? Well, now listen, you have done your homework, haven't you? But I will say... <laughs> Um, it was a, it was a crowning moment in 2020. What, what everything else was falling apart around me. It was yeah. a crowning moment. It was an honor uh, to be knighted. It was a recognition. Uh, I think that my you know my work at the Vatican. I lived in Italy for 30 years. My two private audiences with Pope John Paul. My social work. Um, I think was was the reason people say, "What did you get knighted for?" Like, how the hell did you? Know? I'm like, Wait a minute, hold on. <laughs> you know. I, I, and so, uh, and so it, it's been lovely. Um, and you'll see down in my title, in, in my my name there, I do use Dame because it is an honor and it, it is a recognition. And when you are nominated and you accept, it's kind of expected yeah. that you, I don't walk around saying, hey, I'm Dame, and don't, I don't <laughs> do any of that. But I do, I do like to use it in my signature and certainly here on Zoom, um, just because it's, it's, it is such an honor. And, and I want to, uh, I want to honor those that honoured me so yeah it was a great moment do you ever get annoyed when people don't refer to you as dame or are you kind of not expecting that either most people don't even know <laughs> I mean, you know unless you're, unless you're doing your homework like you've done most people don't even know and some people just think my name is dame <laughs> <laughs> so no, no, of course you don't get upset with things like that. It's it's such an honor, you know, to be again to be recognized in that way. Um uh, and and when we go back to the self-esteem aspect of all of this, people talk to me about what are some of the things and self-esteem. Well, some of the things that we like to that I like to underline is uh your value system. And yeah. if I were to say to you right now, drop and give me five, what do you what are your top five values? A lot of people would probably not be able to answer that right away because yeah. it's not top of mind but it is top of my mind and i like to say i will always take the high road that is honesty integrity gratitude and honor and so i will die on that hill toby it's exactly now i'm imperfect and i'm human and i make mistakes but i do strive to be a better person than i tomorrow than i am today and it's just uh it's just one of those kind of things that if you can in part of your blueprint come up with uh those kinds of things that you know are value systems and you know that no matter where you are you're going to live by those value that those value systems then it's it's that it's it's it's, it's a reinforcement it's another it's another uh, reinforcement system for you to know that no matter where i go you know that i'm going to give you an honest answer i'm going to live in integrity i'm never going to lie to you i'm never going to cheat on you i'm never going to steal from you you know and those are kinds of the kinds of things today that we really we really need to be like we need to be getting back to the kitchen table and listening to our kids and giving the goes a whole whole other show we could do about how uh, deep in trouble our youth is right now because of social media, basically. <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, you know, we, you know, we've just had the Surgeon General here in the United States say, you know, it's an SOS. Mm -hmm. You know, we are basically, you know, about forty nine percent of our youth is either you know anxious, depressed, thinking of committing committing suicide, or have committed suicide. We've never seen such astronom um, astronomical numbers before. So when I talk about self esteem, I'm not talking about this isn't there's nothing frou-frou about all of this you know kids are going on to self-esteem and thinking that it's 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 written in stone when they written when, when they come to realize that a lot of it is just the perception the perception of what someone else wants you to know about them and that you are so much more than enough oh i am enough you are enough we are enough no because enough by definition is only as much as is required yeah and so enough by definition isn't enough <laughs> like is there an enough panel or an enough organization that decides what enough is no here's the new mantra however the new mantra is for all of us i am so much more than enough yes and and nobody gets to tell me you know there there, there are no there's no regulating organ is or, or organ out there that says what enough is so we must be really, really mindful to be in touch with our kids. You know, I'm not a parent and I know how difficult it is. I can only imagine 
but really your kids need you. And if it's not, if you're not a parent, you know, even as not being a parent, I keep my ear to the ground. And if I, you know, I work with interns a lot. I work with young kids a lot. I had one the other day who was just really having a bad day and just kind of crying her way through it. And I listened to, to her the entire time. And of course I was her greatest cheerleader because that's what I'm here. That's my mission. You know, that's my mission. You're of course a media personality and you've dealt with fame, I suppose. So how does that affect self-esteem does it increase it or sometimes decrease it fame came quickly it was swift and it was it was uh i'm going to say for a moment it was all encompassing but i really kept my feet on the ground and i made sure that i always remembered where i came from i always remembered what my value system was again imperfect am i made some mistakes along the way but i always knew that you were never going to get me on a casting couch and that everything i brought to the table was you know my pre- my 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 professionalism. I brought my punctuality. I brought my smile. I brought my talent. I brought my willingness to be a team player. Um, and I, that's exactly what I did. And so I, uh, you know, I really took, I wanted to be famous. I'm going to tell you straight up. When I, <laughs> when I was a kid, it was like, what do you want to be? I want to be rich and famous. Well, <laughs> you know, that happened. And I, and I, but today one, once the, and of course my, my company name is in the limelight, right? So uh, as a, as a child, I was Mary Poppins in the kindergarten play. And let me tell you, Toby, when I sang supercalifragilisticexpialidocious and I got a standing ovation, I was hooked. I was five years old and I know in some way, shape, <laughs> I was going to be on a stage or I was going to be on a microphone in some way, shape, shape or form. In fact, I have lived in, in the limelight or underneath on a stage or in front of a microphone for the better part of my adult life. And I love it. I wouldn't have it any other way. So, um, it, you know, fame is something that a lot of people get carried away with. And they have to understand that it's fleeting, just like any, just like beauty. It's yeah. fleeting. You know, who are you at your core? Who are you? Well, like after all of that, great. But who are you really? Like what? I, what legacy? I don't have children. What legacy will I leave? And this, to me, what I'm doing now with this book is is really my life's work. And the the uh, the, the precursor to all of this, the the fame and the bright lights and the and the stages and microphones and television cameras were really all to get me prepared for the biggest stage of my life. Have you got any future books that you're working on at the moment? Maybe another one? Well, I'd love to be working on another book. I'm still promoting this one. So what I am doing though, is I'm working on, we're going to be doing events and retreats around this book so that I can get people into the room and we can actually do the work. And that's very exciting to me. So we're going to be doing the work um, and, and, you know, creating, uh, you know, what I call teaser or the self-esteem regime teaser. (laughs) (laughs) Well, we can the regime ambassadors that, um, or the esteem ambassadors, let's put it that way, uh, you know, so that we can uh we'll have this lovely trickle trickle down and trickle all around effect yes well where can we find this book the self-esteem regime in the meantime you can find it in uh and uh all over basically amazon has it in every country you can find it on kindle you can find it on audible and definitely on amazon um yeah that's where you can find it if you're in the u.s you can find it in the barnes and noble stores nice well many thanks for talking to us today it's been great to have you here Thanks, Toby. You've been great too. Thank you so much for your time.